Thompson's been in the gym for a long time now. Pretty much all year. Seven kids, he says, that's his motivation. <laughs> Take some pain for. It's enough motivation for anyone. But what you said, he's been in the gym, he's been busy, he's been in, kept, uh, having to keep in shape for a long period of time now, and that's, that makes him dangerous. It's an interesting fight, this. Of course, he's a southpaw, Thompson Pulev, who's got one of the best jabs around, technically so good. How well is he going to cope with a big? You see him stepping over those ropes. A big man, six, five and a half, and a southpaw. How well will he cope? Vladimir Klitschko tips Thompson. Sein Gegner macht sich jetzt auf den Weg in die blaue Ecke. Ladies and gentlemen, the champion, Kubrat, the Cobra Pulev. He's now 32 years old, only 17 pro fights. Thought he was really good beating Ustinov and also Dimitrenko boxed tremendously well on both occasions as an amateur. That's an interesting one. As an amateur, three times he was beaten by the top Italian southpaw, Roberto, Roberto Camarelli. Different sport, different time, more experience. Massively popular back home in Bulgaria. Hails from Sofia. His pop star girlfriend undoubtedly will be somewhere at ringside. Sofia's answer to Posh and Bex. Kubrat and Andrea. Willkommen im Ring. Der amtierende Champion. Kubrat Hule. Is the IBF international belt. And the flag of Bulgaria. Die Halle hier in Schwerin steht. Sollten Sie es noch nicht tun, dann bitte ich Sie, erheben Sie sich nun von Ihren Plätzen zu Ehren der Boxer für die Nationalhymnen. Und wir beginnen mit der Hymne des Herausforderers, des Gastes aus den USA. Champion aus Bulgarien.
Sauerland Events präsentiert Ihnen das nächste Highlight des heutigen Abends. Zwölf Runden Profiboxen im Schwergewicht um den IBF International Titel. Supervisor sind vom österreichischen Boxverband FVA-Präsident Willibald Palatin aus Wien und für die International Boxing Federation Roberto Rea aus Rom, Italien. Geht dieser Kampf über die volle Distanz, dann entscheiden diese drei Punktrichter. The three officials scoring this bout at ringside are Pavel Cardini aus Polen, Donald Trella aus Connecticut, USA und Mickey Van aus England. Und wenn die Glocke ertönt, dann hat dieser Mann das letzte Wort in den Ring. Es ist Ringrichter Randy Neumann aus Cliffside Park, New Jersey, USA. Und das sind sie, die Details zu den beiden Boxern. Introducing the fight in the red corner, der Herausforderer boxt aus der roten Ecke in schwarzen Trunks. Er ist 41 Jahre alt, offizielles Kampfgewicht beim gestrigen Wiegen. 119,7 Kilogramm, 1,96 Meter ist er groß. Es ist sein 14. Jahr als Profi mit dieser Statistik. 41 Kämpfe. 38 Siege, 26 Mal durch Knockout. Sein Coach Charles Mooney aus Washington DC, USA. The Challenger, Tony the Tiger Thompson. Across the ring, the defending champion, der Titelverteidiger boxt in roten Trunks aus der blauen Ecke. Er ist 32 Jahre alt. Offizielles Kampfgewicht: 114,7 Kilogramm. 1,94 Meter ist er groß. Profi seit dem Jahr 2009 mit einer perfekten Kampfbilanz. 17 Kämpfe, 17 Siege, 9 davon durch K.O. Sein Trainer. Otto Ramin, geboren in Sofia, Bulgarien. Er lebt und trainiert in Berlin. Der Ex-Europameister im Schwergewicht. The reigning, defending, undefeated, IBF International Heavyweight Champion, Cobra de Cobra, Pulev. <lacht> Wer trägt den Gürtel des Champions nach diesem Fight? Pulev oder Thompson, die Entscheidung fällt jetzt in Schwerin. Well, ring introductions over, and that's uh, okay, gentlemen, both familiar with the rules Randy of Newman Apparently now with over. final words of instruction. Of course, I want you to obey my commands. But most of all, defend yourselves at all times. Now shake hands and come out of the belt. You can see Thompson slightly the taller man, slightly the heavier man as well. Randy Newman was a heavyweight himself, a fighter himself. Once upon a time, now a veteran referee, very experienced. Tell us a lot about Pulev, this one. Yeah, most definitely. As, as you already mentioned, Thompson in a southpaw, so Pulev having a good jab, but historically a good jab doesn't always work against a southpaw. It's hard to land a jab clean on a, on a, on a good southpaw. And it'd be interesting to see how he gets over that obstacle. But it's a good matchup, it's an intriguing match, isn't it? It was a jab of Klitschko which undid Thompson, commentated on the first fight, and it was fairly competitive for the first few rounds, but slowly Klitschko just picked him apart. Ended, I think, in the 11th, that first fight. Second time round, Thompson wasn't really at the race, as was done in six rounds. Yeah, Thompson was far more impressive, impressive wasn't he, in, in the return match with Price. And he's coming in with a lot of confidence, and as you already mentioned, he's been busy, been active, he still looks in, in decent shape for, for a guy who's never really cut physically, but started off quite well as well, hasn't he, in this round? Yeah, gave him, a, gave him a little look there as he got through with the left hand, Thompson, as much as to say, well, I'm not supposed to be getting through with that one, am I? And he's just uh, got him with a little sneak right-hand lead there as well. And no support whatsoever, Thompson. So far as the crowd's concerned, the only shouts for his favour will be from his corner, you would suspect. 
That will not worry him, though. He's used to it. He's a road fighter, isn't he? He's used to being, used to being in people's backyards. And this, this is the reception he had in Liverpool. <laughs> it was quite hostile, but he, you know, he silenced that crowd, didn't he, quite, quite conclusively. I'll tell you what, he's got a serious pair of shorts on, hasn't he? Not a lot from Pulev in this opening round. Very tentative, the Bulgarian. Just yes, getting through with that jab, that's the weapon. Doesn't want to commit, does he, Pulev? He knows Thompson's waiting to land that left hand, which he did then. And we've all seen what, what trouble that can cause. I think Pulham needs to get a little bit more bounce in his step, needs to do a little bit more feinting, try and draw the lead of Thompson if he can. But Thompson looks quite comfortable. Yeah, if you were a huge Pulev fight, a huge Pulev fan, you'd be looking at this, well, until now, saying that it hadn't been a great opening round for him. That's about the first real attacking flurry that the Bulgarians had. And he took a left-hand counter as Thompson came back off the ropes. Interesting opening round. Yeah, and, and a clear Thompson round. I think he's, you know, he's the one who stood in the centre of the ring, established that southpaw jab, and Pulev struggled to, to really find any, any clean openings. So Rani, the uh, coach of Kubrat Pulev, made his pro debut back in 2009. I certainly don't think Pulev's been a protected fighter. I think he's been an avoided fighter. And there's a, <laughs> a little bit of the fancy footwork yeah. between the two of them. Good camera work, that. And you often find that with Southpaws and Orthodox fighters tripping each other up. Just showing when Pulev did try and commit. Thompson getting through with that, with that left hand, which we've seen has been dangerous in the past. And, you know, Pulev's going to have to be on his game, he needs to be a bit more bouncing instead, a little bit more mobile. He was outboxed in that opening round, Pulev. Here we go into round two. And as you see, as they come to centre ring, Thompson stands tall when he fights, doesn't he? He's a big lad. Yeah, and you can see the difference, can you, in confidence. Good little three-punch combination there from Tony Thompson. He's carrying on where he left off against David Price. He's on a real roll, he feels it, doesn't he? You can see it in his work. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Pulev. I think he's, at, I, I always put him at the top of the contenders list, I guess, for the for the, the shot of the title. But well, if he comes through this tonight, I think you can say, yep, he's somebody who is really ready for a world title shot. But it's an if at this stage, only in the second round. But he's got plenty of problems here. It's always hard to establish yourself quick with a salt ball, especially a good salt ball, you know, it takes you a while to find your rhythm, so as long as he stays safe in the, in the first early rounds, you know, he might get a, some sort of rhythm going later on. But at the moment, it's all Thompson, he's looking well, looking good. And, and he wants put, sorry, he wants Pulev to come forward, doesn't he? He wants to be able to let that left hand go on Pulev's chin to, to test it, to see if he can take, take his power. Oh, he's measuring into that left hand, no doubt. Oohs and ahs from the crowd as Pulev comes bulldozing forward, but not too many of those shots are landing anything like on the target area. I think he needs, when he comes in with that little attack, you know, he comes in with the right hand, left, left hand, both straight punches, throw the right hand to the chest rather than the chin. He's a little, he's a little bit exposed when he's coming in. If he tuck his chin in, throw his the right hand to the body or the chest, then come back with the left hand over the top, that would, uh, I'm sure, be something that Pulev would get some success with. Quiet round, surely somebody's going to gamble something in these last 30 seconds or so. 
There's a lovely, nice, relaxed look about the work of Thompson. Poole left, the chant goes up, but he's not done a lot in this round. No, and Thompson's content, isn't he? Just to take centre and keep working that jab. We forget, even though Pulev could try to back Thompson up against the ropes, Thompson is usually quite comfortable working off the ropes. But he hasn't had to be have to go there yet, as he hasn't really been pushed back too much. Pulev struggling to find find any range or rhythm, and another round for Tony Thompson and Mike has. A lot of uh, heavy leather landed there. And just a word to the referee, Randy Newman, or Randy Neumann, as they job. pronounced him beforehand. But uh, job, Tony, Tony Thompson just having a little word yeah, with the referee as he doing, went back to the corner. He's doing, every time he gets to throw that right hand, he makes that quick shit like that. You can smell him. You smell him coming. So continue to have a good time in there with that jab. Eventually, we're going to drop that left hand oh, yeah. right there. Eventually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bring him arms down. Try to do that thing on the inside. That sucker wouldn't let you. That's all right, he's been fair warned about putting your head down like that. Barry Hunter, the trainer, right. also a good get fighter back, back sorry, in the day. Let you get it back. You got it back? And sound advice, yes, isn't it? Just take your time, Ooh, keep, keep teasing him with the jab, and he'll walk onto the left hand in the end. Showing a bit of success here from Puller, but it was it was one much else was there except for, except for that little uh, little combination. Tony's wife at ringside as ever. In a wheelchair, was she? <laughs> Let's not go there. Tony says his other big hobby, apart from uh, apart from his wife, is uh, is golf. Pulev. So respectful of the potential danger of that left hand. He's not really sorted this out yet, Pulev. No, and he's, he's, he's doing that, that amateurish, leaving your left hand out just to eat a jab off Thompson because you, know, you keep your hands close to your face, don't you? You keep yourself protected, especially in this, in this division. Just trying to sword fence with Thompson. Good jab though there from Pulev. Pulev's got to turn the pattern of this. There's emerging the very real possibility, still early stages, of course, and you don't like to stick your head on the line too much, but he is, to an extent, being outboxed here. And if it carries on like this, well, it's going to be a very good night for Tony Thompson. Yeah, pull up, he hasn't taken anything heavy, has he? He hasn't taken any real, he hasn't taken many clean shots at all, but... He's just not dictating, yeah, though, not, Barry. Yeah, he's just not doing enough work, and he's struggling just to get figured out the, the South Pole stance. Thompson happy, isn't he, just to keep picking the jab out and encourage Pulev to, to risk, risk the attack. Well, I heard Barry Hunter saying, didn't we, you know, just keep on doing this, get out there, just keep on doing what you're doing, enjoy yourself. And then we'll drop that left hand in, didn't he, he said, you know, just sort of set Pulev up for that backhand. Pulev needs to work up and down with the body and the head, needs to focus that right hand to the body and then come back up with the left hook over the top. Just a little bit head hunting at the moment and uh, Thompson's comfortable with it. Good speed from Tony Thompson as well. He's boxed very nicely. This is another neat three minutes from Thompson and very little from Pula. as is reflected by a very quiet response from the crowd. I said there weren't too many Thompson supporters, and there are a fair few for this fella. And he's not making him cheer a deal at the moment. Yeah, he's not. He's struggling, isn't he? Just struggling to figure, to, to figure Thompson out. Thompson boxing well, being quite slick. And leaning on the back foot, so he's a hard target to reach. And you know, 
you always struggle with the south ball to find a rhythm early doors and that's always the case but you know, he needs to put his foot on the gas a bit now because for me that's three rounds in the bank for Thompson I'm sure he'll have watched in great detail of course Pulef and they've managed to uh, dredge their way through the action in that round and find a couple of times he did land a punch but uh, I'm sure he's only too well aware that Thompson, what Thompson did to David Price and he'll not be wanting to leave any sort of opening and that would be that would be smart moves. You no, know, we don't want to take any stupid risks, but we just need to vary the attack from body to head a little bit more. And he's just standing in front of Thompson. I like to see him get up on his toes a little bit. We'll try and work the angles, a few feints, keep the foot on the outside. Well, if you're watching with us at home, you'll have your idea as to how the scoring's going here. But uh, Barry and myself, we're in agreement. Three rounds to Tony Thompson. Mickey Van, one of the judges watching here tonight. Still referees over in Germany as well, Mickey. Pull up trying to get on his toes a bit again, trying to get a little bit of rhythm, a little in and out style. It's almost going back to sort of the amateur thing, isn't it? Trying to just land with that backhand, but get caught with a good jab there from Tony Thompson. And just not being able to land the right hand, is he, to pull it when he, when he does decide to throw it, he's always landing a little bit short. That's a nice left hand from Thompson. A lovely expressive face, Thompson, when he's fighting, when he just gets caught or when he makes somebody miss is sort of the raised. Look at that, look at that. <laughs> pull just landed with a few left hooks when Thompson was span around. I don't think it was anything illegal about it, but Thompson didn't like that and hit on the break. And as it, ironically, that was a, the best bit of a best bit of work from both fighters. So pull up now. No, he's got a little bit of rhythm. Needs to keep pushing Thompson back now. Keep that rhythm with the punches. Keep that work rate. Keep that work ethic going. He's belatedly just risking a little bit more here. Pull left now. Needed to. There you go. That's a nice good one-two there. The right hand landing clean for Pulev. And another one. Best action of the fight so far for Pulev. And an earlier landing with that right hand of the body and come out with the left to go over the top, so... Good response from Tony Thompson and again from Pulev. Warming up nicely. Yeah, it was on the slow burn, wasn't it? It's now starting to... Starting to get into some sort of momentum and one around the head there from Thompson. I think, uh, I think that was payback time. Yeah, I, to be fair, I think, just think um, Pulev got spun around a bit. Thompson already threw the punch in. I think he knew what he was doing. <laughs> I think you're being kind, Barry. He's been around the block for too long not to realise that that was a possibility. Nice jabs from Thompson. Close around this one. Yeah, I think Pulev's had a little bit of a better round so far as he landed some clean. The, I think the heavier shots of the two. Heads going in close. Interesting. And again, Tony Thompson has a word with Randy Newman as he goes back to his corner. You give that one to Pulev? Yeah, it did, yeah. Only, only just again, though. That was a close round, but at least the tide started to turn for Pulev ever so slightly. I just think he got a little bit more rhythm in his work, and when he let his punches go, landed with a few little nice little one-two combinations. I think there was three of them on the spin. Well, there's the punches Here's around the, the back. Hook. Thompson not happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think he punched. I think he punched the glove that was on the side of uh, Pulev's face. You still think that wasn't deliberate? Well, maybe it was, John. I know. Well, I think they both had the moments, so far as that's concerned. Fifth round coming up, this IBF World Heavyweight title eliminator, it's the international title. Are we going to see Tony Thompson against Vladimir Klitschko for a third time, or will Pulev get his opportunity? And Thompson just looking to push Pulev back now, he must have felt that Pulev had a little bit of a 
that with a success in that last round by, by being able to charge forward and wants to nip it in the bud. Ah, oh, that gets through. I think Pulev got to keep that high pace, hasn't he? It looks better when he got that high work rate. And when he slows it down, it seems to suit Thompson. Thompson hasn't really landed the big left hand yet. And he is a bit of a puncher when he lets him go. That's better for Pulev. Really well timed right hand there, wasn't it? Just put a little little dip back with the back foot and just jumped right down that right hand. And lucky for Thompson Pulev, he's not a massive puncher. For me, I think this is where Pulev got to commit. Thompson drops his hand, shimmies his shoulders a bit, so you don't want to feel like you don't want to lunge in and take the risk like he's trying to set you up, but I do think that's some point you have to just uh, take an educated risk and go for it. Pulev trying to get in with that big right hand this time, he does get through. Thompson, a bit of kidology saying, come on, let's get in there, let's trade. If that's what you want, keep coming to me. But Pulev has to remember when he does come in with the combinations, they come out in a different direction. Thompson's trying to set him up, isn't he? Trying to catch him on the way out. But for me, another good round for Pulev. He's clawed, clawed a few back now. Time you threw the jab and trying to throw a hook off that, all right? So you got double jab, you take it there and then back up again. Or fake down there and get a jab upstairs. On the inside, if you get close, you got to turn the thing under. I know you're trying to meet him, I see what you're doing, but I like you to have some motion. Mm -hmm. Just don't be still waiting for that. Okay. Y'all both landed that time. There you go. That was, good. That was the first combination, wasn't it, from Pulev? Just committing himself. You know, he, okay. I think he missed with the left to go over the top, but landed flush with the right hand. I think that's what he needs to do. He needs to keep pushing Thompson back with those three punch combinations. Thompson coming out with a purposeful look about him at the beginning of this, the sixth round. We gave the first three to Thompson, last two to Pula. Thompson trying to get onto the front foot. Oh, good shot there from Thompson. Nice little right hook over the top. He's come up with intent, doesn't he, in this round, Tony Thompson? Must have felt that he'd uh, give away the last two rounds. Two heavy shots from Pulev. Well timed as well, weren't they?
crowd cheering. There's not really much landing, is there, from, from Tulev? Well, every time he steps forward, every time he throws a shot, there's the screams and shrieks. Not a lot is landing flush. He did get to a nice little left hand there, but he's better when he throws his punch in his combinations. You know, one, ones or twos and Thompson can react, but when he throws them with threes, Thompson's struggling. And, and again, good little combination there, but look at this from Thompson. Thompson had the last word in that. Tulev's just starting to plant his feet now and throw things with a little bit more intent. He just gives away the initiative sometimes, doesn't he? You know, he just stands there waiting a little bit too long. He, he throws some nice little cup combinations to get into, into range, into gear, and then just stands back and almost admires his work and sort of gives the initiative back to Thompson. I think he needs to just keep the foot on the gas against Tony Thompson. He's 41 years of age, and you want to make him work. Oh, oh, punch is thrown after the bell by both men. How did you make that one, Barry? Oh, I did that wrong to Pulev. I know Thompson had a little bit of success with that little combination, but most of the work came from Pulev. And I got him... And I got, I got him coming back. Level now. Trotzdem immer wieder mit links beschäftigen. Immer wieder provozieren mit links. Ja? Und dann die rechte durch die Mitte. Kubrat und immer wieder wechseln auch wieder zum Körper. Good shots, weren't they? Lovely shots. And again, when he, when he throws in... in, in in bunches, in, in clusters, he, he looks a good fighter, looks a better fighter than, than just standing off, waiting for Thompson to make a mistake. Thompson started that sixth round the faster, didn't he? But Pulev had a good spell around the middle of the round. It's definitely the key for, for Pulev, it's definitely the key of high, uh, keep a high work rate. Thompson doesn't like, you've know, he, he got a relaxed style, hasn't he? he likes it at a slow pace. And certainly the heavier handed, so when Pulev ups the pace, Thompson struggles to stay with him. You've got nice right hands here from Pulev, just out to find the range, isn't he? Time to work Thompson out, Pulev. Still haven't been real questions asked about Pulev's punch resistance. Thompson's not been able to land big shots clean to the jaw. This is no good from Thompson. I see what he's trying to do. He's trying to walk Pulev down. But Pulev's a very, very technically good fighter. That's the, just keeping your hands up high walking forward is not going to work for Thompson. He needs to go back to getting establishing that southpaw jab like he did in the earlier rounds. Trying to walk him down to find that big left hand. Was Thompson playing for that? Yeah, I think I think Thompson just puffing just a little bit, isn't he? Maybe that's why he doesn't want to throw from long range. You know, he just, maybe he haven't got the snap in his punch that he had in the in the earlier rounds. Right, don't punch. Right, 
Well, I've certainly got the arm around the back of the neck there. Been a messy round, this. Thompson yeah. trying to land it big in the closing seconds. He landed some good shots there, didn't he, Thompson? Some good shots, and pull-ups have gone well. But for me again, John, I don't know if you've seen it, but I still think Pulev nicked that round. Like it like that. He don't like it in the face. When you close the gap on his ass, he don't know what to do, baby. So I want you to drop that left hand. You gonna get, you gonna walk him down like a dog. Drop the left hand there and then bring the hook. Well, it's and a worked out tactic. Under, They've decided that's the way in. He tied. Bring the I don't see it. Like that. I think you know, I think he walked Playing forward. Like you know, even though he had his hands up high, no, he was just giving Pulev well, the opportunity back, to let his shots go, and well, you know he was blocking some of them. Some of them were getting through the garden. I think he, he was doing better in the earlier rounds, wasn't he? Established behind that nice self ball jab. Making pull up tentative on coming in. Still anybody's fight, though. Eighth round. Thought this was going to be a tight one, and it is. It's a lovely jab. Beautiful, isn't it? It really is. I know Thompson's the bigger puncher, let him go, let him go. but he gives away his act. He gives away what, it, what it, the advantage does me when he gets close. The reach. I think they're trying to prove that Thompson, as you say, is the heavier puncher, is the stronger man. But it's a high risk strategy, and he's having to take some as he does attempt to walk him down. It's a good time, haven't he? Pulev just caught Thompson coming in lovely there with the right hand. But as we've seen before, one big left hand from Thompson changes the whole uh, the whole landscape of the fight. Don't punch, get up, get up, get out of there. Tommy, stop punching. Pull left pouring with that jab. Let him go, let him go. Don't punch, get up. Was almost through with the left hand, Thompson. Let go, let go, let go. Coming a bit of a mess, Barry. Yeah, it is, yeah. And Thompson's having his most success when it's messy, but it's not clean enough work to warrant to, to giving him the round at the moment. Thompson looking for power shots. Pulev at the moment just about managing to stifle his work. Again with that right hand. Break, break, break. Back it up. Oh, what have we got here? Look, that's all Pulev, that is. That literally is he just leaned on top of the back of the neck of Thompson and pushed him down. Having a lot more success with the right hand now, Puller. Yeah, I just think Thompson's giving away too much, isn't he? To, he wants to get in close, but he's giving away too much to get there. <laughs> a little bit of play acting. And jumping in there with the back left hand, Thompson never quite worked out for him. I've got to say, I think that's another wrong for Kubrat Pulev. And he holds his head, hit him, hit him. No, you can't. But Thompson trying to make it uncomfortable, isn't he, for, for Pulev? Pulev has got a good chin. He reckons that he's only ever had one count as an amateur or a professional. But he's done a pretty good job of stifling Thompson's big attacks. 
Yeah, he took some, especially in the seventh round, he took, at the end of the seventh round, he took a nice few hefty shots off Thompson and didn't didn't blink, but he got a massive head, haven't he, Pulev? <laughs> he looks like a man who could take a shot. That's Mrs. Sauerland. That's the promoter's wife getting stuck in. Nice to see a family business at work. <laughs> oh, lovely, nice fast hands there from Pulev. Thompson, he's just abandoned that jab, hasn't he, Thompson? And for me, that's been the difference in the last, well, in the last four rounds. Well, it's clearly a, a tactic which they've been talking about. He's been trying to walk him down, as you heard him explaining, trying to land those big bombs in close. But it's not really worked for Tony Thompson. Well, he's letting Puller pick up the points, isn't he? That was hard to see. He's letting Puller pick up the points. I'll say it again. And, and not really landing, when I mean, he did land with that big shot, it's not really having an effect. Thompson showing a good chin, to be fair, you know, he's, they're, they're not... not they're not knockout punches he's taking, but they're heavy shots, aren't they? Well, he's been clipped a few times now. Looks tired to me, Tony Thompson. Well, he's gone down, but surely that's not going to be a knockdown. Oops. Fell down rather than rather than knockdown, wasn't he? Yeah, he hit him on his way down, but it's the ropes. The ropes are too loose. He was leaning, he almost broke his back over those ropes. I think it's starting to become a little bit too comfortable for, for Pulev. Thompson needs to find an injection of pace in his work. And if he can re-establish that southpaw jab, he can get back in the fight. Nice little lead hook there, though, from Thompson. Looking for the big left hand there, Thompson. And just spun away by Pulev. Also, Pulev, has he got a cut over his right eye? Can't, can't quite see, he's back to us. But... Yes, he has. Doesn't look a bad one, but there is a little nick, I think. Definitely tired, Thompson. This is where now, he, in the earlier rounds, he was being flicked. Oh, that's a good shot. Good punch by Pulev, and that made Thompson blink. Pulev will sense it, and he's going looking for him now. There's loose ropes there, allowing Pulev, allowing Thompson to swing right back. But that was a really solid shot Pulev caught Thompson with in the closing stages of that ninth round, and that's another round to the Bulgarian. Oh yeah, without the doubt, yeah, he's, he's he's starting to walk away with this now, isn't he? And for me, it's because Thompson's just stuck throwing that jab. Those tactics are trying to rush Pulev, trying to, trying to bully him to the ropes, didn't work. All they seem to do is tire Thompson out, and Pulev now, he's up the pace, and he's boxing at the rhythm that's comfortable for him and uncomfortable for Tony Thompson. Well, on your card, Barry, Thompson's got to win the last three to get a share of this now, and it doesn't look as though it's coming, does it? No, not at all. That was just, like you said, uh, he was on his way down and uh, could have tried to, try to steal the, the knockdown. Sudanek among those at ringside watching. Long associated with Vitaly Klitschko, of course. And Pulev's still looking the fresh, isn't he? He's still got, a, still got good timing, good speed. Well, he did work it out, didn't he? 
first two or three rounds, he looked as though he was going to have a long, tough night, Kubrat Pulev, but he's turned this one around, and Thompson is now the man in need of big rounds. Yeah, he lost the first two rounds clear, didn't he? Pulev, the third round was pretty close, but then after that, he upped the pace, didn't he, in his work, he kept it at a high volume, and, and Thompson struggled to stay with him, and has struggled ever since. Had a few little successes with, with some sneaky shots, but nothing sustained. And down the stretch here, he really has looked the younger and the fresher. Yeah, he's 32, he's a young 32, isn't he, in, in boxing terms. A lot of amateur experience, mind you. Only had to go 12 rounds on one occasion before Pulev. Having some good shots here again, and the, the, all, the, all the success have been with the straight shots, haven't they? For, for Kubrat Pulev. Thompson looking at the pot shot now. Yeah, he's looking a little bit jaded now, isn't he? Well, the steam, hasn't he? Just, it's a shame. Just wonder if, if, if what David Price would have done if he could have took him into the, into the later rounds. Reddening round the face of Thompson. Yeah. That's a legacy of those right hands, principally, which have been finding the target. He's a wily old pro, isn't he, Thompson? A little bit sneaky at times, and you wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden he came up with a big, a big left hook or a big right hand. Well, he needs one. Look at the crew there from Pulev. Pulev's going looking for him now. He wants the spectacular finish. Yeah, Thompson tight, he's trying to get on his toes a little bit, trying to get a little bit of blood pumping through his body so he can have a little bit of a little bit of a spurt, but it's, there's not much left in him, I don't think, in terms of fitness. Well, he's not certainly not done enough to win that round for me, and Pula ending it very much on top. Well, we're looking at that swelling around the face that I was telling you about. Come on. And he's starting to get banged up, Tony Thompson. Yeah, and we, we said that in the early rounds, didn't we? You know, Pulev needs to fight at a higher pace. You know, let the old, make the older man work. Want you to get it back for successful. Want you to get it back for me, man. And that's just, you know, he's tired, his reactions are slower, he can't see the punches the coming like he did in the earlier rounds. And Pulev doing all the right things, not taking any, too many risks, just throwing those nice three punch straight combinations and, and moving out of the way. Well, they've seen Tony Thompson so much recently that he almost seems like one of ours, doesn't he? But it doesn't look as though it's going to happen for the big man from Washington, D.C. Looks as though Kubrat Pulev is on his way to victory. Just two rounds to go now. Yeah, Thompson looked the boss, didn't he? He looked, looked class, didn't he, in the early rounds. He, even some of the rounds that he lost, he still looked, still looked good, still looked comfortable, but he struggled in the second half, for sure. And he's starting to absorb a lot of punishment now. But he has that punch. And in this division, that always gets you out of trouble, or can always get you out of trouble. Left hand there from Thompson, e even though just a little reminder, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and it's because Pulev has slowed the pace. You know, even though he's having everything his own way, you know, he's still got, I think he's still got to keep it high. Don't give Thompson any encouragement, don't give him a chance to, to land those shots. Yeah, pretty good workman like performance, though, this from Pulev. Well, that's how he is, isn't it, John? That's how he always fights. He's never super spectacular. Even if he finish, he might finish a fight like spectacular, but he, he is a workman-like sort of fighter in, in almost like the Povetkin mode, isn't he? A 
I feel sure that David Bryce will be watching this probably right now and thinking, well, if only I could have produced this sort of performance against Poo against Thompson, then things would have been very much different. Kept the tight defence, didn't he, in the early stages? Yeah, he, he takes a shot very well, doesn't he, as well, Pulev? But yeah, he didn't. Stayed on the outside, or tried to just pick his openings, didn't really show too much ambition, and didn't really take any risks. I think that was the key, wasn't it? Not taking any risks in, in the first few rounds, but from the third or for the fourth round on, he upped the pace quite quickly, and, and it's been his show ever since. Well, Pulev's getting himself right into the mix here. Took the Bullying shot. Thompson back again, he took one on the way in. Clipped him with a right hand, I think it was, Thompson. It was a good shot, but Pulev, he really does take a shot, doesn't he? He took that coming forward. He's getting himself right into the mix here and establishing himself very much as a potential world championship contender. Another round there for the Bulgarian. Yeah, that's it now, John. I think, he, he, think Thompson needs a spectacular finisher. He needs a David Price finish to win this fight. He, he doesn't look like it's going to come. Been a good performance by Pulev. Like I said, nothing spectacular, nothing like extraordinary. There's been a, a proper professional performance. You got the counter going, so you have to put the punches together. You got to close the gap and beat his ass. That's all it's going to take. I think the advice from Thompson's corner has been started off good, but closing the gap has, has been his undoing, I think. Closing the gap and beating his ass is uh, one way of looking at it, but uh, it hasn't worked for round after round. But closing the gap when you've got a couple of inches reach on a guy is not always the, the, the clever option. They believe that they are the team with the punch power, though. Three minutes remaining, Thompson's got to find it if he's going to turn this round. And it's Pula who is the first to go to work. Yeah, when he got that spring in his step, he looks a better fighter, doesn't he? You know, he's a big guy, you know, he's still quite mobile when he wants to be. And when he lets his punches go with those straight shots in threes and fours, it looks good, good work. Pulev stands over 6-4. There's a left hand from Thompson. Didn't land flush. Just showing the hand speed there, wasn't he? Pulev just a little bit short with the shot, but still fast hands. And he's got a good engine, hasn't he, Pulev? He's kept going well. Oh. There's a good left hand from Thompson, but again, Pulev just blinks. Really good shot from Tony Thompson, well-timed. Made the angle for the shot, didn't he? Well, it's the last round of a fight which has shown I guess what we already knew, that Kubrat Pulev is technically very good. Took a little bit of time just to get the confidence there to really get into Thompson's territory, but from the third round onwards, he has bossed most of this. Well, he's done the right things, didn't he? Thompson's a clever, clever, you know, he's been around a long time, he's a clever soul who can pack a punch in either hand, especially that left hand, so Pulev, you know, we, we, I, I had a little bit of a worry for him in the, in the, in the midway through the third round when he had still had up the pace, but he done the right things, took his time, he had patience, he takes a good shot. I think that's what he proved tonight as well. He, he took some some shots off Thompson flush, hasn't blinked. And he showed a tremendous engine throughout this fight. Whether that will work into when the glitch goes, it's uh, still to be seen. Thompson's surely going to see it through to the final bell. 
He's landed with a few good shots in this round, Thompson, to be fair. But still, for me, being at work, lovely. That again, lovely right hand from Kubrat Kulev. Last few seconds of a fight which has been interesting. It's never really cut loose into the end, sort of classic. But Tony Thompson knows the score. He knows that Pulev is the winner and he knows that the celebrations are well merited. And that Kubrat Pulev has taken another step upwards on the ladder towards the world title shot. Yeah, definitely. You know, Tony Thompson was on a roll, wasn't he? He was on a high. You know, and Kubrat Pulev beat the very good Tony Thompson, I think, didn't he? And put himself right, you know. In for a shot against Vladimir Klitschko. Good win. Did you score that last round to pull? I know it didn't yeah. uh, make a deal yeah. of difference. But yeah. In that case, it's what, 9 3 you've got it in Pulev's favour. Yeah, I think, and, I, and I don't even think, I think the rounds were quite clear. I, I, I thought, you know, either way, I think his work rate was just too much. He was too busy for Thompson. And when Thompson did land in the air with heavy shots, they didn't have an effect on Tony Thompson and Kubrat Pulev. He takes the shot very well, he got a good engine, good work rate, good work ethic. You know, they're the sort of qualities you need to, I think, to come up against a Klitschko. Whether he, he, he can put it to practice against him is another thing, but just doesn't pack maybe the, the power that you would like to see for, for, the world, for the world champion heavyweight. But technically very good. Yeah, and patient. You've got, you know, you got, a, lot, you got a, lot, a lot of good things going for him, and you know, if he could just... Tony Thompson waving to the German crowd. Wonder if we'll see him in a German ring once again. I don't know. Good fighter, but on this occasion came up against the superior man who was the Bulgarian Kubrat Pulev. Hugely popular, as I say, back home in Bulgaria. This will be live on Bulgarian television. And they know that this is a really significant win for their hero. Yeah, you don't, you know, you don't really hear of many world-class boxers, professional boxers coming from Bulgaria, do you? So, you know, it's a, it's a big deal for them in the heavyweight division, you know, to think that they can have a heavyweight champion of the world. They're rightly behind the guy, he's a good fighter. As we said earlier, he does nothing, he does nothing spectacular, you know, he doesn't set anyone anything alight, but he does everything good and... No, it's like, as you said, John, earlier, he's, a, he's always in work and like performances. And Well, they know the score early on. It really looks as though it was going to be a Tony Thompson night. But as it panned out, well, Pulev changed his game, didn't he? He had a look, saw what, was, saw what he was up against, and then started to up the pace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's all good-humoured stuff. Just proves how likable Tony Thompson is. He, he, he endears everyone around him, doesn't he? Really makes you feel welcome. The, we, we feel like, we almost feel like he's British because he's been over there so much. But that's how good he was with the public, with the media, with the fans. He was just a, a, a model professional, and that's why Pulev, even though after he had a little few tasty exchanges in the ring, showing that they're actually friends outside. I don't know what that's all about. I don't think that's for your benefit, Barry. <laughs> Though to be honest, those those short those underpants would probably look like T Tony Thompson shorts did if I if I wore them. He's a real character, Tony Thompson. <laughs> there's my tent. There's my tent sort. There, John, from from my camping trip. Taking some time to get these scores sorted out. Can't be any doubt. No, and the difference was once once Pulev up the pace, Tony Thompson couldn't stay with him. I think that's what it was. Here we are then. Das offizielle Urteil. Pavel Cardini aus Posen wertet den Kampf 116 zu 112. 116, 112. Mickey Wen aus Leeds wertet den Kampf 118 zu 110, 118, 110. Und Donald Treller aus Suffield, Connecticut 
Werte den Kampf 117 zu 111. 117, 111. Einstimmiger Punktsieger und Sieger dieses IBF Eliminators und weiterhin der Schwergewichtschampion der IBF, Kubrat the Cobra Pune. 117, 111 tallied with our card. Kubrat Pulev by unanimous decision. Tony Thompson, well, he gave him a good test and Pulev passed it and passed it well. So Kubrat Pulev remains unbeaten. Tony Thompson lost his shorts, as they say in the trade. He took them off and showed us his kicks. Steve, I'm going to break this fight down into two parts. The first four rounds and the last eight rounds. The first four rounds was a very different yeah. fight than the last eight rounds. Yeah. Well, first for the first three rounds, what was a one horse yeah. race, and it started getting four, five, and six were a bit closer, and then I thought the last six rounds was a one horse race. He was just too fresh, too busy, and when he finally started forcing the pace, that's mm. when Thompson couldn't live with him. You'd have liked, I thought, Pulef would use his jab a lot more because that's such a, a key weapon to him, Tony Steve. Nullified but it. Tony nullified it, but hey, You know, even against Klitschko in that second fight particularly, he couldn't get his jab off against him. Mm. But um, he, he was just too fresh for him. But, you know what, watching that 36 minutes there, Steve, I don't think that Vladimir Klitschko will be um, worrying too much about...